Rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be with each and every one of you. It is my distinct honor to be here with us, with all of you in this beautiful masjid, in this beautiful city of Akrington. Uh, my first visit to the city and I hope inshallah it's the first of many future visits to this part of the United Kingdom. And I want to congratulate the Muslim community here in Accrington for establishing this beautiful facility to serve the entire community. Uh, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all those who contributed to establishing this house of Allah and built for them a palace in Jannah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned Man banna lillahi masjidan banna allahu lahu baytan fil jannah Whoever builds a masjid for Allah in this dunya then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala builds for them a mansion, a palace in Jannah. And if Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala builds for you a home in Jannah, He wouldn't send you to Jahannam. I want you to think about this. And remember it. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala builds for you a home in Jannah, He would place you in Jannah to enjoy that gift that He has prepared for you. So our hearts should be attached to the masjid. One of the beautiful characteristics of the believer is that his or her heart is attached to the masjid. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised that person whose heart is attached to the masjid to be in the shade of his protection on the day of judgment. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Sabatun Yudhilluhumullahu fi dhillihi yawma la dhilla illa dhillu. There are seven categories of believers who will be protected in the shade of mercy of Allah on a day when there will be no protection except that of Allah on a day of judgment. And one of these seven categories, the Prophet said, Mu'minun qalbuhu mu'allakun bil masajid. A believer whose heart is attached to the masjid. And I want tonight to share with you the example of one such believer. Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq, Rajulahu Anhu, the noble companion of the noble Prophet. Let me see by show of hands how many of you have gone to Medina and visited Masjid al Nabawi. Raise your hands if you've gone to Medina. MashaAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us to go to Medina time and time again. You go to Medina, you stand up in the masjid, near, in front of the mihrab of the masjid. On that side is the, road, the, the maqam of the Prophet ﷺ. And between his maqam and his member is the road al sharifa That's the maqam where the Prophet is buried, where he was living. The hudra of Sayyidah Aisha, radiallahu anha. 
On this side of the masjid, the first door is called Masjid Babu Salam. It's called Babu Salam, the first door, because that's where we enter to go and give salams to the Prophet The second door is called Babu Siddiq, named after Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq, Rajulah Manhu. And at that door, there's, there's a room which is enclosed now. It's called Khawkat Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq, the home or the space or the room of Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq. That was his home. There's a window there facing this side. That window faces the door of the Prophet where he would live. Before the Salah, the time of Salah, Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq used to sit down by his window in his home and he's looking at the door of the Prophet waiting for the Prophet to come out for Salah. And then Sayyidina Bakr Siddiq would come from his home and sit down just behind the Prophet Then they would pray their Salah and so on. He goes back to his home. He does whatever errands he has to do for his family and so on. Before the next Salah, he sits down by that window. He's looking at the door of the Prophet Waiting for the Prophet to come out for Salah, then he comes and sits down just behind the Prophet. His heart is attached to the masjid, to the Prophet. And one day, the Prophet told the Sahabas. That there are different doors in Jannah welcoming those who perform that spe special type of ibadah. For example, there is a door for those who perform salah. Babu salah. There is a door for those who would fast in Ramadan regularly and Sunnah fast and so on. Babu Siyam, Babu Zakat, Babu Hajj, and so on. Babu Qiyam, Tahajjud. Different type of riba, different door. And on the Day of Judgment, when the believers are going to Jannah, these doors are calling out to the believers to welcome them based on what they did. And then the Prophet said, there's one person, my Ummah, who would be called by all the doors, all the doors competing to get him to enter through their door. Prophet said, that person is Abu Bakr as Siddiq. Mu'minun qalbuhu mu'allakun bil masajid. A believer whose heart is attached to the masjid. I want you to put this love in your heart for the houses of Allah. That you love the house of Allah, the masjid. Wherever you go, have this love in your heart. For the house of Allah. And because of that love in your heart for the masjid, that masjid will bear witness for you on the day of judgment. Yes, that masjid will bear witness for you on the day of judgment. This belief or so and so mention your name, prayed in, in this masjid. Every spot you pray upon will be a witness for you.
And this is one of the reasons why when we pray, for example, our Fard Salah, and we continue to pray our Sunnah, then we move. It's a common practice. We move to another spot to pray. You want to continue praying, move to another spot and pray. And the reason is that every spot you pray upon will bear witness for you on the Day of Judgment. Qalbuhu mu'allakun bil masajid. I want you to put this love in your heart for the house of Allah. Tonight also, I want to share with you an aspect of this special grace, the fadl of Allah, the special grace of Allah that he bestowed on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala revealed a special eye in the Quran that the Prophet loved tremendously. You know, the month of Sha'ban is referred to as Shahru Rasul. Rajab, Sha'aban, Ramadan. Three special months. Rajab is called Shahrullah, the month of Allah. Sha'aban is called Shahrul Rasul, the month of the Prophet. And Ramadan is described as Shahrun lil Mu'mineen, the month of the believers, month of Allah. Followed by the month of Rasulullah by the month of the believers. The Prophet loved this month of Shahaban. And one of the reasons, of several beautiful reasons, one of the reasons is that this ayah was revealed that I want to share some reflections with you tonight. The ayah of Salawat that you all know. In Surah Al Ahzab, chapter 33, verse 56, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals Bismillahir Rahman Rahim, Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya ayyuhaladina amanu, sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa baraka ala Sayyidina Muhammad. This ayah was revealed in the month of Sha'ban. One of the reasons why the Prophet loved the month of Sha'ban, and there's several other reasons, but we're focusing on this ayah tonight, so I'm mentioning that. Get some water from you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, many things in this ayah. Several of the scholars of Islam have written books on this ayah alone. Volumes on one ayah. Ayah to Salawat. In Allah wa malaikatahu yusaloon ala nabi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declares with emphasis that he, Allah, sends salutations on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is a special grace, a special honor, a special blessing that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has given, has placed upon his beloved Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And because of this now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends salat upon other of his creation. The believers, the um of the Prophet wasalam, the previous prophets and so on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends 
salat upon them. The Prophet says, for example, Man salla alayya, whoever sends salat upon me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends salat upon them ten times. Why? Because of the Prophet This is what I want you to understand. This is a special blessing given to the Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah yusalluna ala nabi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does it. It's a special blessing and bounty and favor and grace bestowed on the Prophet And yes, other of the creation of Allah get salat from, from, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but it is because and through Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Inna Allah yusalluna ala nabi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, Inna Allah wa malaikatahu. And the angels of Allah. I want you to consider this unique grace and bounty bestowed on the Prophet by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are certain unique attributes that was given only to the Prophet sallallahu No other creation. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has many angels. Countless numbers of angels. That manage the creation of Allah as he commands. That manage the creation of Allah upon the command of Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has angels that are with us. Kiram and Katibin. Recording angels, for example. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guardian angels for believers. And the more pious you are, the more angels you have guarding you. Yeah. The closer you are to the Prophet, the more you have mahabba for Rasulullah, the more angels are with you. Yeah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has angels at the door of the masjid. For example, Jumu'ah, recording everyone who is coming to the masjid for Jumu'ah, for other salah. You come early, you get more blessings. In one hadith, the Prophet said, the person who comes first for Jumu'ah, the angels record for them the qurbani, the sacrifice of a camel. Persons come after, the angel record for them the, the sacrifice, the qurbani of a cow, then of a sheep, and so on and so forth. Until when the Imam ascends the member to deliver Khutbatul Jumu'ah, the angels close their book and they come and sit down in the, in the congregation to listen to the Khutbah. Different types of angels. Angels of the mountains. Angels of the clouds that distribute water and rain. Wherever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands. All types of angels, commanding, controlling, organizing, managing, creation. Angels of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the greatest of angels, the archangel, Jibreel alayhi salam. The angel of revelation, and so on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has angels that are created and they spend their entire existence standing up in Qiyam, worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are other angels that are created, they spend their entire existence in Ruku, bowing down to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Their entire creation, nothing else. Angels are the creator. They spend their entire existence in sajda, prostrating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But no matter what their assigned duty is, all the angels of Allah are sending salat and salams on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Subhanallah. No matter what they're doing, all of them are sending salawat and durood sharif on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A unique grace and fadl that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Says in the ayah, Inna Allah wa malaikatahu. His angels, and there are no angels that do not belong to Allah. All of them belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This ayah also establishes another important point that I want to share with you tonight. And this is the nature of the command contained in this ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to perform salah. In the salat at kanat ala al mu'minina kitaban mawkuta. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to perform salah. But nowhere in the Quran does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Verily he Allah prays, therefore, O believers, you must pray. No, he just commands us. He doesn't need to do anything before he tells us to do that. He is independent of all of his creation. He can do whatever he wants to do. And so he commands us to pray. He commands us to fast in Ramadan. Kutiba alaykum usiyam kama kutiba ala ladhina min qablikum. Kutiba bima'na furida. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed fasting upon us. But nowhere in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that He Allah fast, therefore you must fast. He commands us to fast. That's it. That's it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Commands us to give zakat. But nowhere in the Quran does Allah subhanahu wa says, He gives zakat, therefore you must give zakat. And so on. All the commands of Allah, He's commanding us. Except for one thing. And He reveals that in this ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah yusalluna ala nabi. Allah sends salat on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says that. He states that. The kaifiyya, the how of it is, this is a divine attribute. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not similar to what humans do. There's a difference between divine af'al or actions and human actions. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes the statement, Inna Allah yusalluna ala nabi. That Allah does this. And then he addresses the believers. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Send salat and salams upon him. O believers. After he establishes that fact that he, Allah, does it. Therefore, O believers, you must do it. This is a unique grace given to the Prophet Wasallam. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is doing this. And for, for, for us, we, our salawat, our darood is a dua to Allah. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Ya Allah. 
send your prayers upon our master, your beloved prophet. We recite that durood and salawat, a dua to Allah to bless the prophet sallallahu And among what the scholars have mentioned, the description of the salawat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept that dua, it's guaranteed acceptance, and he bestows the blessings on the Prophet ﷺ. So I tell you tonight, there's no moment in time when the spiritual maqam, the status of the Prophet ﷺ is the same. What it was a minute ago is not what it was now. The maqam of the Prophet ﷺ is continuous being elevated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because at every moment in time, someone or something is sending salat and salams on the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. There is no moment in time when someone or something is not sending salat and salams on the Prophet. Sallallahu alayhi I said someone like ourselves, but I also said something because. And this great poet from the subcontinent, Muhammad Iqbal, he mentioned this in one of his poems. Beautiful words that every tree and every branch of that tree and every leaf on that tree is sending sal salawat on the Prophet. Yes. You know, the Sahabas, they used to be with the Prophet. Sometimes they're walking in the streets of Medina in in the pathways between mountains and so on, there's no one there. And then the Sahaba said, it's recorded in the authentic hadith, that they would hear someone, they would hear a voice saying, Ashhadu annaka Muhammad Rasulullah. And then they would look around and they would see no one. And then they would ask the Prophet, who is it that said this? And then he points out to the rocks and the stones and the trees along the way. He said, they're all saying it. They're all saying it. Yes. Sending salat and salams on the Prophet There is no moment in time when someone or something is not sending salawat, the road on the Prophet In Allah, wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Yes. A unique command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us to do this. I also want to share with you another concept, which is. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants something to happen, it will happen. His power is kun fayakun. Kun fayakun. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing us, commanding us to send salat and salams on the Prophet. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has made it in such a way. That so many people and all the angels and the believing jinns are doing it and much of the creation of Allah, inanimate objects. I mentioned those other examples recorded by the Sahabas while they were with the Prophet The Prophet he said, when you recite salawat, it is conveyed to me. The angels bring it to me. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala returns my soul to my body. I'm alive. And I respond to that salawat. So 
if every moment in time someone and something is sending salawat and durood on the Prophet Sallallahu where is the soul and the body of the Prophet Sallallahu It's always there together. The Prophet is alive. Prophet is alive. In a state of life that's known to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're not saying he's just like us. No. Innahu basharun wa laysa kal bashari. He's a human creation, but he's not like any other human creation. He is Rasulullah sallallahu So the Prophet is responding to our salawat. When we recite salawat, the angels are taking it from us and conveying to the Prophet sallallahu There are many among the awliya that record their personal spiritual experiences. <coughs> that when they recite this salawat, they see the angels coming and taking it from their lips, as they say. They see that. They experience that, conveying it to the Prophet ﷺ. Yes. Because the Prophet said, they are angels, specially appointed angels. Their only duty is to collect the salawat and durood that the believers are reciting and conveying it to the Prophet ﷺ. And he knows, the Prophet knows the, your name. It's conveyed to him, this person, so and so, send salat and salat and salams upon you. Yeah. It's a great honor. It's a great honor. <laughs> then the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that this happens on six days of the week, from Saturday to Thursday. But on Friday, it's different. On Fridays, this day is so important and so virtuous that when you recite your salawat, no angels will take it to the Prophet. It goes directly to the Prophet. One on one, you're communicating with Rasulullah. On Friday, when you recite your salawat, it's going directly to the Prophet. And he's responding to you directly. Subhanallah. What a great honor for us now. What a great honor for us. Yes, we, we started out by saying that this is a great honor given to the Prophet by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by the revelation of Allah. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu. Yusaluna ala nabi. But what I also want to tell you tonight that you receive great honor from Allah when you recite salawat on the Prophet I want to share with you a human example. I want you to think about a person or a few persons that you love most in your life. Anyone want to tell me? Who is a person you feel closest to in your life that's alive now? That you know. Your mom? Okay. That's a safe answer. Except for those who are married, the brothers who are married. You have to be, you have to say that quietly. Because when you go home tonight, you don't know what happened. Let's say your child. Many people, so I said persons, not one only, but so your, your mother, your father, your wife, 
your children. These are people very close to you. So let's say, let's take example of your son. You have a son. Whether they're a child or a teenager or older. And let's say someone does something special for your son. He graduated from university looking for his first job. And he's looking for several months not getting a job. And then someone helps him to get a job, gives him a job that's beyond his expectation. He is so happy. How would you feel about that person? They did something special for your son. You would like that person. You would respect them. You would be pleased with what they did. For the rest of your life, you would treat them well with respect and love whenever you meet them and so on. This happened. This is a human behavior, human nature. I'm, I'm just using this as an example for you to understand. The people you love in your life. People, if others do something for them that they, they really love and appreciate, how would you feel about that person? So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves Rasulullah He is the beloved of Allah. If someone is making this dua for Rasulullah Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammadin If someone is making dua and doing this good act for the Prophet how would Allah respond to you? And this is why I want to tell you tonight that when you recite Salawat and Darud Sharif on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala loves you. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala loves you. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned many things about how Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala manifests this love for us. How He rewards us. In the dunya, we're getting closer and closer to the Prophet ﷺ. Every time we recite salawat, love in our heart, we feel this love for him. In our graves, the salawat is our best companion. It brings nur, light, into our graves. The light that stays with us. On the Day of Judgment, one of the things that happen in the Akhirah is that we have to go over the Sirat or pull Sirat, the bridge over Hellfire. And people would cross over this Sirat in different ways. There's some that will cross over it so quickly they hardly notice it. The prophets and messengers and awliya and great believers. There's some that would pass over quickly. It's easy for them. Others would cross over this sirat, this bridge, slowly. And this sirat, for some people, would be wide. For others, it would be narrow. And for others, even more narrow. Until for some people, it would be like the blade of a sword. Imagine having to cross over that. And whoever falls off the sirat, Jahannam is below. They're falling into Jahannam. May Allah protect us from that. And there are some people that would be almost falling off the sirat, hanging on for dear life, hanging on to the sirat almost falling into Jahannam. And then the Salawat, the Darud Sharif, they recited in this dunya, will come to them and pick them up 
and put them back on that bridge and take them over the Sirat. The honor that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives to us. The salawat in the hereafter as well. One of the things I want to remind you of when you recite this salawat in the dunya, this mahabba grows in your heart for the Prophet and there's something I, I want to share with you also in that light and that is if you want to get closer to feel this closeness in your heart to the Ahlul Bayt to the Sahabas to the Awliya Recite salawat on their behalf and you would feel in your heart more and more love for them. One of the examples I want to share with you at this time of the year, we're in the month of Rabi Athani and we observe the howl or ors of Ghaus al Adam, Sayyidi Sheikh Abdul Qadir al Jilani, Sultan al Awliya. In this month of Rabiathani, his howl or horse is on the 11th of Rabiathani. So I want you to try this out. You know how much or how you feel about Sayyidi Sheikh Abdul Qadir al Jilani now. When you go home tonight, Write that, write that down. Some description of how you feel in your heart. For some people, there is no attachment. For others, there is a small attachment. And for others, they have great love for him. Different believers, different state. But wouldn't you like to have intense love in your heart for Sayyidi Sheikh Abdul Qadir al Jilani, the lead of the Awliya? So I want you to do this. I want you to recite salawat or durud sharif. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin abdika wa rasulika nabil ummi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim or any format of salawat that you know. Recite a hundred times every day. From now to the end of Rabia Thani, just a few weeks. And at the end of the month of Rabia Thani, I want you to look at your heart and see how you feel about Sayyidi Sheikh Abdul Qadir Al Jilani Radiallahu Anhu. Recite the salawat with the niyyah, Ya Allah, convey the blessings of this salawat to Sayyidi Sheikh Abdul Qadir Al Jilani. Do it with that niyyah for him. And you will see what will happen in your heart. And similarly now, your closeness to Ahlul Bayt. How do you feel about a Sayyidah Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam Do this. Recite salawat on our behalf. And you'll see that mahabba growing in your heart. How do you feel about Sayyidina Ali al-Murtada? How do you feel about Sayyidina Imam Hassan, Sayyidina Imam Hussein, Rajulah one whom wa alayhi wa Would you not want to feel close to them, to have mahab in your heart for them? This is the tested way. I want to share with you the spiritual secret tonight. Do this and you will see what will happen for you in your heart. Closeness to those who are close to Allah. And it takes us close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So our salawat takes us over the sirat. 
I also want to mention now on that day itself, on that day itself, we are in the day of judgment. How many Muslims are in the world today? What is the number of Muslims in the world today? Someone can tell me. How many Muslims are there in the world today? Approximately. 1.3 billion? Yeah, those are the answers that you hear. 1.3 billion, 1.5 billion, 1.7 billion, like this. The number of the Ummah. So it's quite a lot. 1.5 billion? It's difficult to imagine that. When, when, you, when you go for Hajj, like Dev Arafat, you look around and there are people everywhere. And it looks like an ocean of people. As far as you can see, you look all around, you, there are people there dressed in Ihram. It's an amazing scene. It looks like countless number of people, an ocean of people. But maximum is 4 million. It's not more than that. They actually try to maintain that, the, the authorities, not to let it go beyond 4 million. Because if it does, it's chaotic. There are all kinds of problems. Because it's, it's limited space and everyone is doing the same thing at the same time. So it causes a lot of problems. Some of you stampede and people get killed and so on. So they're trying to maintain that number maximum. Four million as compared to 1.5 billion. How many people are there on the Day of Judgment? That's just Muslims alive today. What about the previous generations? How many billions of Muslims going back 14 centuries? Moving ahead. How many billions there would be until the Day of Judgment? Countless numbers, unimaginable. All of them on the Day of Judgment. And you were there in that crowd. The first person that will be resurrected on the Day of Resurrection is the Prophet Sallallahu this is not of his unique qualities, it's the, the fadl, the bounty of Allah, infinitely bestowed on the Prophet. First person. There are 70,000 angels to welcome him. SubhanAllah. And then Ahlul Bayt are resurrected, his family, his companions, the awliya, and so on, and then all of us. The first ummah that's resurrected on the Day of Judgment is the ummah of Rasulullah. He's resurrected. Then the Burak is brought. A beautiful carriage, the most beautiful carriage we'll ever see, is brought attached to that Burak. And then the Prophet ﷺ is invited on the Burak. The Ahlul Bayt is invited on the Burak, and so on. The prophetic entourage. And then the angels would bring Liwa ul Hamd the banner of praise and give it to the Prophet ﷺ, showing that he is the leader of all creation on that day. But there are billions of people there. I ask you tonight, how close you want to be to the Prophet ﷺ on that day. You're way behind. You can hardly see that Burak and that courage. But wouldn't you want to be near? So you can see the Prophet and he can see you. So the Prophet gave us the secret of how you can get near to him. The first thing I want to share with you, this incident where a companion came to the Prophet and he asked him this question, Ya Rasulullah, when is the Day of Judgment? And the Prophet 
did not reply to, to the, or respond to the question directly. He responded to him by asking him a question. We know the answer to that because in the famous hadith of Jibreel alayhi salam, the Prophet said, neither you, Jibreel, nor me know anything about the exact date of the day of judgment. So, but the Prophet asked him, what have you prepared for the day of judgment? You want to know when is the day of judgment? What have you prepared for it? The Sahib said, Ya Rasulullah, I haven't prepared much of Salah and Siyam and Zakat and Hajj, Ibadat. He said he hasn't prepared much, even though he's a Sahabi, he's done much more than we are doing. But for him, he's saying he hasn't done much. So the Prophet said, what have you prepared? He said, love of Allah and love of the Messenger of Allah. That's what I've prepared. That's what is my heart for the Day of Judgment. When the other Sahabas, when they heard these words from the Prophet, they started to cry. They started to cry. Because they knew what was in their heart. Their heart was filled with Mahabbat al Rasul, the love of the Prophet. So they are crying tears of joy, happiness. Because the Prophet said, You will be with whom you love on that day. Then, on another occasion, the Prophet mentioned this hadith which is reported by Imam al nasai in the Sunan. Prophet said, أَوْلَى النَّاسِ بِيَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَكْثَرُهُمْ عَلَيَّ صَلَاةً The closest of people to me, the nearest of people to me, is the person who is most frequent in reciting salawat upon me. That's the secret that we need to put in our heart. The closest of people, the nearest of people to me is the one who is most frequent in reciting salawat. Subhanallah. So you are on that day, day of judgment. There are billions of people there. You are way behind. But the Prophet is telling us what is the secret, what is the way of getting closer and closer to him. So I want you, as you continue to recite Salawat and Darud Sharif, I want you to remember that day of judgment. Imagine that day of judgment you were there. And in your heart, there's this desire to get closer to the Prophet And every time you recite your salawat and durood, you're moving in front of that person ahead of you. You're moving through that crowd. Moving through that crowd. Getting closer to the Prophet I want you to imagine this as you recite your salawat and you're begging the Prophet Ya Rasulullah, keep me close to you. You beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, keep me close to you, keep me close to your beloved Rasulullah This is the tasawwur, this feeling in your heart, in your mind as you recite your salawat. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin abdika wa rasul ka nabil ummi wa ala alihi wa sallam or any form of salawat that you recite. You feel this way about your salawat. You're getting closer and closer to the Prophet That you can see him. He can see you. He knows of the salawat you've recited in this dunya. And he smiles with you. He tells you, I'm proud of you because of what you do, what you did in the dunya. What a happy moment that would be for us. The time to do it is now. The time to do it is now. 
And so I want to conclude my talk tonight by requesting you to take an action step, to do something. And that is, I want you to tell me tonight, each one of you, how many salawat or darood you want to recite every day? That you pledge to do every day minimum you take a number that you can sustain for the rest of your life how many salawat you want to recite every day so that you came to this lecture i came all the way from canada far far away to be here in accrington tonight And I understand there's some competition between Accrington and Blackburn. Now I know the brothers and sisters in Blackburn are doing a lot of salawat. How much you want to do tonight? Remember, every time you do this, you're getting closer to the process. And I'm just sharing a few of the benefits. There are many, many more. But I want you to commit yourself to an action step tonight to do something. So I want to hear from you before I conclude my lecture. Maybe you didn't expect this tonight, that you'll get some homework. Not a homework like once in a week or once for a course that you're taking in university or college or school. It's every day for the rest of your life. But that's an amazing thing to do. So who wants to start off? Let me know how many salawat you want to recite every day. Take a number that you can sustain, you can upkeep. And then you can do more inshallah. Who wants to start with the blessings? If you don't raise your hands, I'll ask you. Mashallah, the brother over there, you get a lot of blessings for everyone that follow you. What, how many you want to do every day? 500. Takbir. 500. 500. And the scholars have mentioned blessings of 500 salawat a day, of 100, 200, 300, 500, 1,000, different numbers. They've mentioned what great blessings, that, that's, a, that's a great number, 500 every day. Take a few minutes. Uh, you know, you, you could say, do 100 after each salah. So five salah in a day, that's your 500. A few minutes that you can recite your salawat. But great blessings will come in your life now in this dunya, immediately. You will see the blessings unfolding in your life. Who wants to go next? Bismillah. Yeah. How much you want to do? 500? MashaAllah. Very good. Who else? Raise your hands quickly. Yes. How many want to go? How much? 600. 600. Takbir. He wants more blessings. He wants more blessings than the other two brothers. He's doing 600. Take a number that you can maintain. That because you're doing this for the rest of your life. And then you can ramp it up. You can increase it. But great are the blessings. And subhanAllah, doing it 100 times after each salah, or in the evening, before you go to bed, or in the morning before Fajr, sit down and do salawat. Great blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of which, one of which is that you are blessed with ziyarah of the Prophet That you will see the Prophet in this dunya, before you leave this dunya. And if you see him in this dunya, if he visits you in this dunya, he will intercede for you on the Day of Judgment. Yeah. The brothers on this side, how much you want? How many you want to take? Raise it now. Two hundred, very good. Sidi Shah. Five hundred, mashallah. Sidi Shah. A thousand. A thousand takbir. A thousand. This is very good. And by the way, the sisters can uh, do the same thing as well. Inshallah, uh, you can commit your numbers, everyone, to do this salawat. Anyone else? I want three more persons that will stop. Yes. How many? 
1,000? MashaAllah. Stand up, stand up. We have to honor you and recognize you. What's your name? MashaAllah. A thousand. This young boy says he's doing a thousand salawat. And he does the salawat, he gets blessings. And his parents, your parents are here? Your dad is here? Yeah, his parents will get his blessings also. His grandparents will get the blessings also. The salawat he recite will go in the mizan of his parents. They would get that blessing on the day of judgment also. A thousand salawat. Takbir. Oh. Very good. You can sit down. Who else wants to go? Yeah. A thousand, mashallah. Takbir. Oh. A thousand. Who else? One final person, then we, we stop the pledges. Who want to end it off? With Husnul Khatima. If not, then I'll assign a number to all of you, and it's higher than what has been pledged so far. <laughs> so, who else wants to? Bismillah, go ahead. Red Moroccan Juban, and so on. 100. 100, mashallah. Very good. Very good. May Allah bless you for that. So, all of you, I want you to try. The thing is, why I want you to pledge a number, you have an objective to, to achieve every day. You make this pledge, and then my door is Allah SWT and make it easy for you to fulfill the pledge. You know, you do it, and then so you have something to work towards achieving. You should do this. You know, you, tonight you tell yourself, make this pledge between you and Allah SWT, what you wanted, even if it's a hundred, even if it's just one hundred salawat and the Prophet Sallallahu How close you want to be to him in this dunya and in the akhirah. And may Allah SWT bless us with increased love for him and for mahabba for his beloved Rasulullah SAW. May Allah SWT keep all of us united in this dunya and reunite us in Jannah with the Prophet SAW, with the Ahlul Bayt, with the Sahabas, with the Awliya to be with them in Jannah and Firdaus. May Allah SWT make it easy for us to practice our Islam May Allah SWT protect us from disobeying Him. May Allah SWT keep us in the shield of His mercy from this day onwards for the rest of our lives. May Allah SWT protect us in our graves, protect us from the punishment of the graves, protect us from the grievous uh, punishment of uh, the Akhirah from Jahannam and bless all of us with Jannah to fear those. Ameen, Ameen, Ameen. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa akhi da'wan alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.